Are you a complete beginner in Hearts of Iron 4 and do you want to learn the game? Then stay tuned. Hello everyone, my name is Flying Dutchie and welcome to my tutorial for complete beginners in Hearts of Iron 4. I have some tutorials for U4 already and Victoria 3 and now it's time to make one for Hearts of Iron 4. It has been a really long time that people were asking for me to do this and it's time to, uh, to start it. Now, I'm going to promise you one thing. When you have watched every video in this series, you will know how to beat the single player game fairly easily. And uh, that is just going to be my promise to you. I will uh, treat this as a tutorial for complete beginners and that means that I will explain everything. Um, in the beginning it will be a lot of talking, showing things on the screen, but uh, eventually it's going to turn into a, a beginner let's play. Uh, the further we go, the further we will play the game. Maybe I will even conquer the world in this tutorial. Who knows? Uh, before we are going to start, make sure that you have deselected every DLC. We are going to play on a uh, vanilla game. It's so much easier to learn Hearts of Iron 4 without any DLCs. So that is the first thing that you need to do. And maybe you should play this next to, uh, next, to, uh, next to this screen. So hopefully you have two screens. Then you can play... Uh, together with me and then you will learn everything uh, uh, in steps so that's my promise that I will have for you uh, we are gonna start a single player you can also play multiplayer uh, but I almost never played any multiplayer and I am not very good at multiplayer games because there are some different uh, rules and different templates you want to use so this is purely for the single player uh, 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 part of the game this tutorial and we are going to start a new game. Maybe you should play the tutorial yourself, so they have a little bit more knowledge. But we are going to start on 1st of January 1936, that's the earliest uh, starting date of the game. And we are going to play as a Germany. But Dutchie, Germany is such a big country, I'm going to fail. I have to do so many things at the same time. Yes, you do have to do a lot of things at the same time. But uh, Germany is the trigger of the World War II. So he is the uh, Adolf here, is the uh, biggest aggressor in the game. And if we are playing as, uh, as Germany, we will decide when World War II starts. And I think that is a very good idea. So we're going to start as, uh, as uh, Germany. Um, yeah, you can read all of this, but we are going to over this when we are going into the game. There are some, uh, some trades and some things you can do as Germany. We're going to select the country as Germany over here. Now, then you will go over the over the uh, map view here. Um, and just go for a regular game. Don't go with civilian or recruit because it's it makes the game too easy in my opinion. Regular is already easy if you're going to follow my path here. Don't enable Iron Man mode because then you cannot go back to saves. And if something is going wrong, you can always go back to an earlier save. And make sure you have enabled historical AI focuses on. This means that the uh, AI will always take the same path that happened in history. For example, uh, Russia or Soviet Union will go to war in Finland for uh, this part over here. And we will get a civilian war in Spain where the nationalists most likely are going to win. And we will have Japan going to take uh, declare war against China. So these things will all happen because it's all scripted. And since it's scripted, we know what's going to happen. And then we also know that we are safe until we are going to uh, pull the trigger. Now, I'm going to start the game here. Um, then we will uh, talk about everything we see on the screen at the starting screen over here. Alright, and welcome into the game, guys. It could be very overwhelming, all the information you see over here. And we are going to talk about the things so, uh, one at a time. And we are going to use that when we are playing as well. And then I will explain it again, maybe a bit more detailed, so that you maybe better understand everything of this game. The goal of this game is very simple. You want to build an army, an air force, and a navy to conquer the world or protect yourself against an aggressor. And the goals you can make yourself. You can go for a world conquest. You can uh, start as a smaller nation and try to uh, join a... Uh, Join the, the Axis faction, or the, or the Allies faction, or the Soviet Union, the Comintern faction. It's all up to you, really. And uh, you can guide the game with some uh, focuses, but we're going to over this, this uh, thing very soon. And that would explain things a little bit better. Uh, there are five speeds over here. You can go with minus and plus on your, on your keyboard and increase the speed. 
when you are at peace, you're going to play on speed 4 and 5, and later when the wars are happening, maybe on 3 or 4 or something. It depends on how uh, intensive everything is. As Germany, you might want to even play on speed 2 or 3 at the start of the game, because you want to maybe micro some things that I will also show to you guys. Now, there are a lot of things on top of the screen here, so let's just go over all of this. What we see over here and what we see over here and what these things are. Now let's just start with uh, showing what these things are up here. So this is your political power and you can see it over here that it's uh, going to be used for law changes. Uh, you can appoint advisors in your cabinet, military stuff um, and we can take decisions with this as well. So it's somewhat uh, important and uh, you gain this by default too and since we are Germany we are getting even more because Adolf Hitler is getting 25% bonus which is really nice um, we also have a minus penalty the minus 0.2 and that is a thing that is for Germany that is going to happen we will take a look at that later so very important uh, currency that you always want to spend really you don't want to accumulate this spend it when you can or when you want to wait for something better but never get more than 200 here that's that's not good actually now there is a stability uh, modifier here and that gives you also more political power uh, we see a modifier for your goods factories we're gonna go over this very soon as well uh, it just means the lower this number the better it is for you because you can make more stuff that is what you need to do you need to know right now and your factories and your dockyards your factories produce artillery guns support equipment trucks tanks whatever you want so the higher stability the better because you get more output you get a bonus how much stuff you're gonna make uh, then we have the war support uh, this will grow over time when things are happening in the world and some focus trees will also happen with this and um, it just makes you uh, yeah the people want to go to war or not and yeah you get some mobilization penalties surrender limit goes uh, down uh, but eventually for germany this will go to about 70 or 80 percent automatically really and then you will not have any penalties anymore then you have the manpower uh, we have 1.33 million manpower waiting to be used and we are going to put this all in the field right now we have 270,000 people 269.6 thousand uh, in the field uh, we also have some Air Force, 34,000 people are working in the Air Force and 28,000 in the Navy. And uh, with, current, with our current law that we have, we have a certain amount of manpower that we are going to use. And uh, yeah, this will also get, uh, this will go down when we build up our army, but we can also get more when we change our conscription law. And we will do that later as well. Now this is the amount of factories we have, we will go over this in detail very soon. Um, 72 is a really good start for a country. I think Germany is one of the strongest uh, countries at the start of the game. I guess the Soviet Union also have a lot of factories. Um, and there are different types, but we will go over that very soon. This is your fuel. Um, you get fuel from oil. Uh, we don't have any oil as Germany at the start of the game. So getting fuel, we need to do this on a different uh, way. And I will show that later as well. For now, it's not very important to know this thing. Just see that the green bar, it's almost full. So we are almost full with our silos. And then we are not getting more fuel. Uh, logistics, we will talk about that later as well. That is your supplies that you need to take care of. Uh, there's a lot of uh, things that can happen when you don't have enough supply. Always make sure that your armies get supplies. But I will show that as well. And these are your convoys. You use convoys for trading, for... Uh, naval invasions, for your supply routes, and, <coughs> and also transferring troops, of course, when you go over the seas. So that is all these things here. Uh, you don't have to pay that much attention to this at the start of the game. Just your political power is very important, because you, this, will, uh, this will happen no matter what you do. Your fuel will go down with things you do. Yeah, you can't always have a, f a f full fuel tank. That's not going to be possible, so... Now a good way to start the game is always go over these tooltips here. Uh, these are things that maybe require your attention. And most of these clicks over here will also open these menu buttons over here. Uh, maybe we should start with the research because that is a very easy uh, thing to explain. So I can click on this thing 
but I can also click on this symbol here. This is your research technologies button. So if I click here, you can see we have four research slots. But I can also click here, that opens the same window. Uh, you can see that we have four slots. You can see if you have any bonuses to your research speed. And I don't know what this is. I think that is just a one-time bonus you can use or something. Yeah, I think that's the case. So yeah, we have four slots. And um, what you can do is wait 30 days. Then 30 days of research will be stored. If you wait longer than 30 days, you will lose research. So, but it doesn't matter if you wait or not. So we are just going to click right now. We want to research our first research. here. And in the vanilla game, there are only eight of these buttons over here. And if you have all the DLCs, you have way more options and way more things you need to take care of. And that makes things a lot more uh, complicated. So it's very nice for us that we have a very good overview of all the research here. We have an infantry research tree. We have a support companies tree that you can use on your divisions. We have armor. Right now we have the Panzer II light tank research that we are also producing. Our artillery tree for anti-air guns, artillery guns and your anti-tank guns. We will go over that later. Then there is a naval tree. There are different types of uh, ships in the game that I will explain later as well. Um, and how they work. Uh, we have almost everything researched. We don't have the super heavy battleship. But that one is uh, so expensive to build. And I think it's better to build two of these than one of these. So I'm not going to research anything of here. Uh, we don't have any carriers at the moment. Maybe we'll go and uh, research some carriers just to show off how that works. Then we have an Air Force. There are six different types of planes. Now luckily we don't have the DLC enabled because then you have to make your own type of plane. Now we have planes that are... Uh, yeah, they are made for one goal. And you can only adjust them a little bit. So right now, uh, as you can see, it's 1936, 1st of January. And we have researched everything except for the heavy fighter in the 1936 part of the research tree. Um, I don't like heavy fighters. I don't think they are that useful as Germany since everything is close by as well. So I prefer the normal fighters. And now we are going to the mo two most important trees for the start of the game. Engineering and industry. Now this is your uh, engineering uh, tree over here. And you can see that you can also get atomic bombs later in the game. I almost never use these. So I don't think it's needed. The only thing that atomic bombs do is uh, lower the uh, surrender limit for countries. I don't think it doesn't do any damage. But it has been a really long time that I use atomic bombs, so... Not sure what I'm gonna do with this, but this is the most important tree here at the start of the game. Because the first one gives a research speed bonus. And uh, you can read this, but the most important thing is here, we will get a 3% research boost for the rest of the game. That sounds very helpful. We are gonna research this. And now the first slot is filled. And when this one is researched, we will go to the mechanical computing. Because then we get another research boost. And then you, you get another research boost and another one and another one. You want to get these uh, when it is almost or when it is in that year. So when it is 1938 or December 1937, I want to research this to get the 5% research speed. Because that is for the rest of the game. Uh, you can also see that if I would do it now, uh, the technology is two years ahead of time. That gives a huge penalty. So for every year, I guess it's 200%. So you don't want to do that really. Unless you really, really want something. But most of the time you can spend your research on other things that are uh, not ahead of time. So that's what you want to do. Then we go to the industry tab. This is also very, very important at the start of the game. Uh, the game is consists of two phases, really. You want to build up your economy and your army in the first phase, and then is, there is the war phase. I think before 1939, we will absolutely not be at war. So the first three years are going to be build up. Uh, and you have an, a production tree here, and a construction, and here is your oil and rubber and that kind of things. We will go over this later. For now, we need to know, we want to build up our economy. How are we going to do this? Well. We're going to do that with construction speed. Because we are going to build factories. 
And this is a bonus to our construction speed and a repair speed. Now repair speed is not very useful right now, but later in the game. We want the construction speed. We want to build quicker. We want to snowball our economy as quickly as we can. So we're going to reset construction one. We also want to get the basic machine tools from the production. Uh, we get a production efficiency cap. Uh, this is a bonus to how much uh, goods you can make. Uh, and that that's, that is getting accumulated over time. I will show that later when we go to the production tab in the game. But for now we want to use this so we can open up our industry paths over here. Which gives more output to our factories. Now if you want to snowball your economy that sounds like a great thing right? So we're gonna get this one. Now we have one slot open. And you can do multiple things with it. Uh, most of the people go to the infantry tab here. And get the 1918 uh, Leichte Minenwerfer. Uh, it gives you it gives you all kinds of bonuses. And you want to get those bonuses before you go to war. Uh, so this could be a really good pick. And I think I'm going to take it as well. Uh, so it is out of the way really. Let's uh, take this out. You can see all kinds of upgrades to different templates. Uh, they get defense, breakthrough. Your infantry is getting a bit better. So, let's get it. And now the pop-up is gone and we are researching. So that is, we have taken care of this in 100 days. We need to assign a new research. That was this tab. Uh, the next thing in here is free civilian factories. You have free civilian factories to use for trade and building constructions. Well, let's click on this thing. Hey, it opens up the construction tab over here. Interesting. So apparently... We have free construction factories, also known as civilian factories, that we can build our economy with. Now this screen shows what you can build in the game. Let's quickly go over it. We have infrastructure, which helps with the construction speed. So that could be helpful, but I will uh, show you a small trick when you should use it and when you should not use it. You can build air bases to increase uh, these things on the map. You can increase the maximum capacity of airplanes. Not very useful. Anti-air to shoot other planes out of the skies. They are not really dying, I think. They just get uh, a penalty for their ac actions on your territory. Uh, we're not going to build this at all, I think, at the start of the game. Then we have a military factory that makes military equipment. And then the most important civilian factories it takes a longer time than military factories to build but these buildings make more buildings so right now we have how much do we have left 24 yeah we have 24 unused civilian factories the or orange factories that can uh, make stuff so if i build a civilian factory and i click on this then this map opens over here so we own this territory and this territory and um, you can see how many slots there are. So for example, in Hanover, the state, there are only three slots to build right now. That will increase later with technology. And the 80% is the infrastructure level in the state. There are five levels, so each level is 20%. And if you have built up your, your infrastructure to the maximum, so if I click on the infrastructure here, I could build one more infrastructure, you can see. Then you get a, a double speed to construct civilian factories. And these factories make more factories. And then these factories can also make more factories. And that is the thing we are going to focus on at the start of the game. Build up our civilian factories to build more stuff. Now, I have a rule for myself. When I am going to build uh, infrastructure first or when I build civilian factories first. Uh, I can show it over here. I will quickly click on Thuringen. We have a level 3 infrastructure in Thuringen. Then this opens up over here. And here you can see that the construction speed is 126. We have 15 out of 15 civilian factories producing this one civilian factory. So we go to, to 16. But yeah, we have some spare, so keep that in mind. And uh, you can see that the infrastructure is giving a 1.6 bonus. Without the bonus it has a construction speed of 75. Now it is having 126. 
We also have a bonus from our trade law, but we will go over that later. So, just keep that number in mind. It is 126. If I go in, Berlin, in Brandenburg here, it is 141, because we have one extra level of infrastructure over there. So, my rule of thumb is, if you have a level 4 infrastructure somewhere, for example in Brandenburg, you only want to first build your infrastructure to go to the maximum bonus if you can build 10 or more factories in that state. So Brandenburg, I would absolutely not build an infrastructure because we only have 3 slots. We are going to open I think 4 more with technology, so technically we have 7 slots available in Brandenburg. That is not 10. So I will not go to 5 infrastructure, I stay at 4. Uh, but if I go to, let's say, uh, Moselland over here, you can see we have already seven factories that we can build here. Plus the technology that opens up three or four slots, so we can have, we can build ten or eleven more factories in Moselland. So then, in my opinion, it is worth it to go to the maximum infrastructure first. Build this quickly, and then shift click, build the 7 civilian factories when this infrastructure is built. Because later in the game, that infrastructure gives a will build things a little bit quicker than if I would not build the infrastructure. I hope you understand what I mean with this. So that is my rule of thumb. Um, if you have a level 3 infrastructure, which we have in Mecklenburg, 60%. I would go to maximum infrastructure if you can build five or more factories. And that is almost always the case. So when you have level three infrastructure, I would always go to maximum and then build other civilian factories. Maybe not in Schleswig because we can only build one factory. But if you can build five or six factories uh, in the game, for example, here in Hinterpommer, we can build three, but we will open three or four with our technology. That is seven factories that we can build here. I would first go to maximum infrastructure here and then build all these civilian factories. So that is what I'm doing. If you can build, if you are at level four, you need to build 10 factories and then upgrade. If you are at level three infrastructure, you want to at least build five or six civilian factories. If that is possible, you also want to maximize the infrastructure over there. Now, let's take a look at our states over here. For example, here in uh, Niederschlesien, Low Silesia, we have a level 3 infrastructure. But we already have 7 open slots. And that means that if I build the infrastructure here and I get the technologies, the uh, infrastructure that I build here first, so I go shift click, because there are two levels possible, this is going to increase the speed of civilian factories significant in this state. And we can build so many more that I think the snowball effect by doing this and then click the civilian factory, shift click here, and build seven civilian factories is going to be better for us. So that is how I play. Now what you also saw here on the infrastructure screen is that when you build more infrastructure you get more resources out of states. Some states don't have any resource, for example this one and this one. But there are states that have a huge amount of resource. For example here in Moselland, there's a lot of iron. So by building that one infrastructure, we, al we also get 10 more iron that we can use. So that is the other plus thing for infrastructure. And you also get a little bit more uh, supply that we will go over in another video. So this is what I like to do. Now I first want to build the infrastructure and then the civilian factories. So I will click this button here to put this on top of the queue. And then when these are built, the civilian factories, the, the 24 that we are using right now, are going to be used for the other things. So this is good enough for now to uh, keep building up our uh, economy. We're going to build more civilian factories to build more civilian factories. And then at some point in the game, we're going to make military factories, dockyards, gonna make synthetic refineries to get more fuel. Uh, normally you can only get fuel from oil. Now Germany has no oil so we have to make a lot of these uh, synthetic refineries. And the good thing about this is you also get rubber from it. We also have no rubber source. Rubber is in uh, Asia. 
And this way we can make our own synth synthetic rubber. Now you can also make fuel silos. Uh, I never built these at all, I think, in any of my games, so not going to be used at all. And these are the supply hubs. We are not going to click on this or this because that will get uh, that will blow your mind really. What you're going to see on the map that is going to be very confusing with all the information. We will do that in another video. But this is to uh, extend your supply hubs, and you need that to supply your armies, naval bases as well. There's something else in the dockyard, a naval base for supply, and naval dockyard makes boats. And you can build forts inland and on coastal. And that could give you a defense bonus. So you could build these, but we are not going to do that at all. We will get some from our folks as it will go over very soon. So construction is now taken care of. Uh, I think the sound is a little bit loud. I will turn this a bit down. So that is a bit better, I think. Okay, we are going to the next tab here. We have the military factories. Let's click on this. What is going to open? This screen is going to open. The production screen. Now, this looks... Did she... What do we need to do here? Help. Well, these are your military factories. Remember for your construction thing here that we could build military factories? Now, we of course have already a couple of military factories. And they are making stuff. Right now we are making infantry equipment. Support equipment, we are making artillery, we are making our 1936 light tank, we are making trucks, we are building fighter, close air support and tactical bombers. So these are our military factories. I'm gonna turn off my navy stuff so we are don't, we cannot take a look at that, but we will do that later. Dutchie, what should I make? I don't know what I should make, Dutchie. Should I do this? Should I make only guns? And should I not make any artillery? Well, that depends what you want to do really. But a good thing to start off with is building at least 4 or 5 artillery. Because you want to use artillery on your infantry units to give your infantry units a attack stat. You can see when I hover over the artillery, uh, you can see what it gives. It gives more defense. It gives a bit of breakthrough. We will go over, over all these stats in another video. But the most important thing that artillery gives is soft attack. This gives 25 soft attack. And soft attack is needed to attack the enemy soft units. Infantry are soft. They have no armor. So if you want to beat the... Uh, for example, we will go to war of Poland. If you want to defeat their infantry... We want to get a lot of soft attack, so we want to build at least 4 or 5 uh, artillery. So let's get more artillery over here. Uh, your support equipment is used for all kinds of things as well. I would also go to 4 here, at least. Um, what I also would do is make a little bit more fighters and a little bit more close air support. And we are now going to take a look at these buttons. You can see that we have one military factory left that we can use. We are using 27 out of 28. And uh, here you can see some uh, bonuses for your factory output. So these are just our bonuses for how much, how much stuff we are going to make. And here you can see your resources. We'll go over this very soon. Uh, but everything you want to produce is costing resources. Now we do have a lot of steel. So the guns need 20 steel. We have that. That's no problem. Our support equipment needs aluminum and steel. We also have that. Our artillery needs some tungsten and steel. It's not red, so we don't get any penalties here. The first penalty that we get here is for our trucks. We don't have any rubber in our country. Luckily for us, we are still making trucks. Trucks we need for supplies. Uh, but since we have no rubber, it's going at a reduced speed. So apparently we are making wheels of rubber without any rubber. That is how the game works. It's very weird. But the, the, the tires are still produced. For some reason we still have rubber, you know. That's just how the game works. Otherwise you can't make trucks and that would completely ruin the game. But it goes with a reduced speed. So you can see that when you hover over this bar here. Uh, since we have no rubber, it goes 7.5% uh, slower. That is not a big deal. That's actually fine. But then we go to the next production thing that needs rubber. 
our fighters and all our planes need rubber. And since this one is lower than the truck, it gets a heftier penalty. For example, here we can see we get a 17.5% penalty. And then this close air support should get maybe 27.5 or something. What is it? Yeah, 27.5 penalty of lack of resource. So uh, since they all need rubber, the ones that is at the top that needs the rubber first gets a minor penalty and then the penalty increases with every step. So we are making almost no tactical bombers. Because we have no rubber. It has a penalty of 35 with only one factory. Now you can solve this with trading and we will do this very soon. Uh, but yeah, we have still one military factory left. So what do we want to make? Now let's open up these tabs over here. Let's go to the inventory and artillery equipment. Here you can see all the things we can make right now. Some of the things are already in. We are already making the Carabina 98k. The infantry equipment. Which gives defense. Very important stat for your infantry. Uh, we don't make any civilian trains yet. Maybe we should produce some trains. Trains are needed for your supplies. So when I hover over my supply thing here, you can see that uh, right now we only need 7 trains. Uh, and we have 60 trains in our stockpiles. But we are going to make so much more in uh, army so that we need over 100 trains. So it is very helpful to start making some trains. Now I click this. And you can see it on the lowest part here. On the production queue. Now you can you can uh, hover over this and uh, or click your left mouse button and just uh, rearrange them. I like to put my planes below everything else so I put my uh, trains above the planes. And you can see here how much we have in the stockpile. We are using seven we have 60 so we have 53 left that are not getting used and we are only making 2.7 a year. And that is because our production efficiency is very very low at the moment it will go to 50% over time and with our technology over here this one we are going to get it to 60% so that is why this technology was very important uh, let's go back to the production screen here and that means that we are gonna make like 10 or 20 trains a year that is fine at no way we're gonna make way more I think it's time six we are going to make 12, 13 trains a year. That is okay, eventually. So this number will go up, our production efficiency cap. And then we're going to make more trains. So that one is in. Uh, let's take a look at this screen. If we are making everything that is over here. So we are making the guns. We are now making the trains. We are making the support equipment. We are making some trucks. We are having artillery. Uh, and we are not making any anti-air units. We were good for your air attack. You can see the stats here. This is not getting any soft attack. It gives a little bit of heart attack and air attack. I am not a fan of the anti-air. Since we are Germany, we can make our own air force. So we can fight the enemy planes away with our own planes. We don't need to use this on our infantry and our other templates. It's just a waste of a slot in my opinion. So... I would recommend using anti-air and later on anti-tank that we can research on uh, infantry templates for smaller countries, but not as Germany. So we are not going to produce any anti-air. So we will we are making everything in this tab over here. Uh, let's go over the armored vehicles. These are the things that we can make right now. We have the light panzer too. We are already making that over here, so that is in the queue. Uh, we could also make the uh, heavy tank one, the Gross Tractor. Um, it has a lot of armor, but it takes a very big production cost, and I am not a fan of using heavy tanks at all. Uh, you could use them as a one heavy tank with your whole infantry to give your infantry division a bit of armor, which we will talk about later as well. Something you need to uh, protect yourself against piercing of the enemy. So we aren't going to make any of this. So we have everything in the queue over here. Let's take a look at our planes. Uh, we are already making the fighter one. Uh, we are already making the close air support. Uh, we are not making any naval bombers. I am a big fan of naval bombers. You can put naval bombers over sea tiles and kill the enemy 
uh, navy. So I absolutely want to make more of these. So I'm gonna click this in. And we're gonna put this, I guess, over here. Now we are not having any factories making naval bombers right now. Because we don't have any spare military factories. So what I can do is maybe get one factory away from the guns. And then the factory went to the naval bomber. So we are making a little bit of naval, naval bombers this way. Okay, we are making the tactical bomber. Uh, then we have some transport planes. I don't think we're going to use that at all. And we have strategic bombers. I am not a big fan of using strategic bombers. They, um, they just kill buildings and stuff, right? Um, and yeah, you want to conquer them, so you have to repair them yourselves again. So uh, this is very helpful if you want to destroy, I guess, forts and stuff. Uh, let's see, yeah, you can increase the bombing stat here. And then kill enemy forts, for example. But I'm not a big fan of these strategic bombs, so I'm not going to make any of these. I only want to get these planes over here. Maybe I don't even want tactical bombers. These three planes, the fighter, the close air support and the naval bombers are my most important planes as Germany. So that is all done. Um, then we are going to go to the dockyard step here. So we can gonna click this thing. And then it opens the production screen again. But we don't see any, uh, any fleet Dutch. Why is that? Because we have unselected these things. I can click these things and now we can only see our fleet, what is getting produced. And at the start of the game, Germany is making a lot of submarines, they are making two heavy battleships and a couple of screen ships. Oh, the heavy cruiser is also a, uh, a, a, a heavy ship. And we have one dockyard available. So if I click here, you can see that uh, two of the ten uh, dockyards are now building the submarine. Um, I am going to put this to one and make sure that we are going to finish the production that was put in. These are already finished almost, these are halfway. You don't want to uh, disband these uh, these boats over here, you want to really build them. And I just click everything over here, like this. And then when this is built, the two factories will go here, and then three factories are going to make this one, four are going to make this, five, six are going to make the destroyer, seven are going to make this destroyer, and then they are going to make the, uh, the cruiser and the battleships. And we will get a pop-up when our naval dockyards are finished with this. So that is taken care of. Um, we are having a, uh, a pop-up here for missing equipment production. Now, that means that we are having something on the field that is not getting produced. And that is our transport planes. Now, I don't want to make more transport planes. I think at the start of the game we have 80. And they are used for... Well, are they only used for... Let's see. I think they are only used for paratroopers in the, in the vanilla game. I don't think this gives any supplies. Yeah, you cannot make any variants, so we don't want to make any transport planes. So I will right click this thing and tell the game, I don't want more transport planes. I'm fine that we are not making it. So I'm going to right click that one away. Uh, then we are going to the national focus. And that opens up the focus tree for your country. It's very big, but for Germany, it's a very small one. This is a small focus tree. If you're playing as any other country, you will get a huge focus tree. And most of the focus trees are uh, divided in your production, your army, and your political tree. And for Germany that is exactly the case. And this tree gives us a, a path what we want to do. For example, Germany, what they did in history, they started with the Rhineland. At the moment, two of our states are demilitarized. You cannot put any armies there. That is from the uh, World War I treaty. And uh, yeah, that, that is how it all started really. And then you can go further. You can get Austria next to you. You can get more parts from Czechoslovakia. And the whole world watched how Germany took it. Until the moment that Germany said, we want Danzig, we want to connect East and uh, West Prussia to Germany's mainland. 
Germany wanted to take this. This whole state, I think, actually. Or just a couple of provinces, I'm not sure, actually. But they wanted to connect their lands together. And that is when France said, and now we are done. We are going to war with you. And that is how World War II started. So, that is all over here. We can get lands for free, and we will get it, because we are playing on historical. Until the point we are going with Danzig or war. We could also go with Danzig for Slovakia, and then still not trigger the world war, and make Poland a friend. That is possible. But we will go with Danzig or war. We are going to play a normal game here. But this is all... Uh, Political. This is your navy tree for Germany on the right side. It's small, but it's giving nice bonuses. An army tree, a air tree, and a industrial tree. Now, we could start with the industrial focus here. It takes 70 days and it takes up one political power. Uh, and when in, we have done this in 70 days, we will get some research bonus for industry and we get a political advisor. We're going to talk about that very soon. Uh, and this one would give construction speed, so that is going to be very helpful for us, I think. So this could be a very good first focus. We cannot take these focuses until the one in front has been researched. So we can only do the four year plan right now. Air and army innovations. We don't do these because they don't build up our economy. Naval rearmament, getting more naval dockyards so we can make more boats. Can be good, you can play as a naval Germany. I also have a naval Germany uh, uh, series on the channel if you're interested. Or Rhineland. And start the political tree. Now the good thing about this thing is that we get 120 political power for free. So this could be a very good first focus. So we're going to go with Rhineland or with the four-year plan. Hmm. What could be the best thing to do first? The 120 political power is really nice, but let's get the four-year plan first. And get the political advisor. I think that is better than starting with this one. Yeah, let's go with the four-year plan. We are going to get all our bonuses. Let me check one more time if that is a good idea. Um, it is actually not. I will not explain why. Can I still change it? I will go with Rhineland. Oh, I can't. Okay. We're going to do a four-year plan. Done. <laughs> we are going to do the four-year plan first. It's giving industrial stuff. Um, and I'm gonna cut this video here. We will go over the last four tooltips and then we are going to talk about the army, I think. I'm gonna take a look at our uh, stats over here, go over the last buttons that we can click over here, and maybe just go over the buttons on the screen in the next video. And then we will go and start playing a bit, I think. So hopefully you are still with me. It's a lot of talking at the start of this uh, tutorial, but I will promise it will get uh, better and better. You will understand things uh, easier and easier with every video. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this. Make sure to like, subscribe, take a look at the links in the description if you want to support me. And I hopefully see you in the next part. Bye bye guys.